people can say, no, I'm gonna work, I, like I need to work, I'm, I'm not sleeping enough, I'm not doing this, but it's like, okay, you can do all that stuff and hey, you might build a big business and you might also kill yourself in the process. When you actually look at it, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go and pick the healthy option, but the healthy option isn't actually healthy. The kind of whole Western thing of just take a pill or if you get overweight, that's okay, you can have surgery or take a statin. We don't have a national health system, we have a disease management system. 100%, 100%. <laughs> fact. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Ted Talks YouTube channel. Um, I don't like sitting next to this man because he makes me look buttered, but D Ludlow is here, everyone, and he's actually at my house. Yes. Because you know you, you're always too busy. You know you, you put your events on my wedding anniversary. Oh, you didn't come to my birthday because you put another event there. So yeah, he's, he's been avoiding me. Apparently, no. you lot are more important than me, but that's fine. No, my bad. I, Second I, fiddle. I do feel bad because it actually does end up landing on really important dates. Literally. <laughs> So. I was like, sitting here, like, can't do this, can't do that. And we missed you at the birthday, man. It was fine. You would have... Oh, Nana, God. Nana had oh, eight God. chicken drumsticks. Eight. <laughs> My mum was like... Just, everyone was like, what were you He just ate and he did boasted he, about it. Did he bring like Tupperware with him? <laughs> <laughs> I, on the yeah. I think he did, you know. Yeah. He, um, that boy can eat. So today, speaking of eating, we're talking about health and fitness. Yeah. Because you and I have like really briefly spoken about it. Mm. I think I've seen you once or twice in the gym, and obviously there's that topless photo of you, you know, <laughs> deadlifting or something. Yeah, 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 when you used to box. Um, so like, and also you have kids, which you have three kids, a lot of kids, mm. and you have multiple businesses. You're 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 doing a lot, right? Mm. You're the kind of person traditionally who does so much that sometimes health, lifestyle, balance can kind of fall a bit because you're so focused on business. Are you someone who balances it, or does it take a back seat? No, it doesn't take a back seat. Um, I, I could probably do more, um, but I try and get to the gym at least three times, try four times. Yeah. I go for like, um, I go through stages on like running. Um, so I try and like run two or three times a week, but I like running at night. So like 9, 30, 10 p.m. when it's, I just like, I don't know why I just I find that peaceful. I agree. Yeah. yeah, I just put like headphones in and it feels like there's no one there. Mm -hmm. In the winter as well, because it's dark then, but I like that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, like, I go through stages where I go more than sometimes and I don't, but yeah, I, I, I try to, I think it's important, if you're trying to perform at anything, I think you have no choice really, but to make sure you exercise and and eat well, yeah. And I think, you know, you're right, it, it, is, it is the foundation of business. Like mm. people can say, no, I'm gonna work, I, like I need to work, I'm, I'm at my desk 24, you know, whatever, I'm not sleeping enough, I'm not doing this, but it's like, okay, you can do all that stuff and hey, you might build a big business and you might also kill yourself in the process. You might take 10 years off of your life expectancy. You might have high blood pressure. You might, you know, more and more we learn nowadays that a lot of things and a lot of diseases that we thought were genetic or purely biological are not. You know, there's a book there called uh, When the Body Says No. Mm. And it kind of looks at lots of case studies of like um, disease personalities, you know, that people have certain upbringings and certain personality traits mm. that massively increase the chance of them getting certain diseases with or without like a genetic predisposition. So a lot of the time we are responsible, and that sounds harsh and sometimes it is, because sometimes we're not. We have, we have genes, we have exposure to sun, we have exposure to things, but there is a large element of things we can control from mm. an early age in terms of our, how we do things mentally, which leads to what we do physically, right? So for people out there who are hustling and hustle porn and doing all that shit, it doesn't, it just doesn't work in the long run. And who wants to be unhealthy, but really rich? Uh, well, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here. i am probably botched this, but I think it was on your podcast with Tyler. I think he mentioned something about um, kind of like, if you're in shape or stage, yes, it's first impressions, right? element of self-respect too. Mm. I, I, I do agree with it. So now, you know, you can't just judge anyone in the street because people are going through different situations in their life. But I do feel like, you know, a lot of it again is common sense because if, if I said, you know, if I eat McDonald's breakfast every morning, I have a pack of sandwiches at lunch and I have pizza every night for the, for, for the next three months and don't go to the gym, don't do any exercise, how do you think I'm going to look? You ain't gonna look like this, bro. Yeah, so you know, it's, it's like <laughs> yeah. I think that a lot of the time, just having self awareness to be like, you know, because we all go through it. You know, I remember when we went into lockdown, it was like everyone was just stuck in their house, and you know, all of a sudden, you had a choice there to do I let myself go a bit here because I can, or do I not do it? And you know, a few weeks I did. I was a bit like I'm stuck in the house, and you start 
your Eden goes out the window yep, a little yep. bit and it can happen and I think that it's just being able to be self-aware to the point where you don't let yourself go too far where mm -hmm. then it becomes very hard to bring back and you're on an uphill battle but yeah I think that yeah in life I think that you have a duty to yourself really because you know the the food we eat even if you go to the supermarket now there isn't anything actually real good that you can buy even like the meats and everything in there and the veg it's got you know um, plant defense chemicals on veg it's yeah, got like a fossil, yeah. yeah all sorts of stuff especially in the, in the US and certain countries yeah. it's mad yeah, I think that there's like a cap in Europe on a lot of things but mm. it's still it's still there and I think that so because we don't get as nutrient foods or as like organic foods as we used to probably yeah. be able to we have to make certain choices now because it's already hard you know yeah. so yeah and um, I think it was Socrates said, uh, let food be thy medicine before medicine becomes thy food. Spot on. Right? 100%. Like, food has the power to heal us, to keep us healthy, to maintain, like it did for thousands of years, you know, before we had drugs, before we had this Western thing of, oh, you're sick, have a pill. You've got mental health, have a pill. You Have a pill. Take a paracetamol. Like, all of my grandparents, and it's, it's a different generation, but all they are told is, have a paracetamol. And it works, which I'm not fussed about because it's a, it's not that yeah. toxic and it's it placebo, it works. But the kind of whole Western thing of just take a pill or if you get overweight, that's okay. You can have surgery or take a statin yeah. or not. Like, you know, with diabetes, people reverse, my mum reversed the diabetes. You yeah. can, you can. With, through diet. But that's right. however many years ago it was like, oh, you're going to be on metformin. The rest of your life, you're going to have to inject. And now like that's totally massively changed because humans have said, nah, hold on a minute. If I got into this mess, can I get out of it? And you can't always. You know, some things are irreversible, but bodies are fucking insane. Well, it's funny because um, I can't remember who said it, but it was, it was someone mentioned we don't have a national health system, we have a disease management system. 100%. Good <laughs> percent. Fact. Yep. And, and I think that, you know, of course, you can go as, down as many rabbit holes as you want, but I agree. And, and I, I heard someone else say that you can, one, you can't out train a bad diet, for one. Right, it's very hard. Because... Your brother said that. He said he's the fittest fat guy alive. Doesn't he say that? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah, it's true. You can't out train a bad diet, and 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 also it's just like, just everything that comes with it is um like you can't. I do believe that you like you mentioned about your mum. Then I think that like I can't remember who said it again, but it was like anybody can be. You can heal anybody to a certain extent as mm. how far you go, but you do have to look at like you know, more of an alkaline diet if you really want to, you know, cause, and I worked a lot to this. So when my dad had cancer, he had stage four cancer and we was looking at, I went down the rabbit hole. Mm, it, right? You have to, yeah. yeah. And um, I come up with all these different things. I was looking at, I challenging all the opinions of all the people I listened to because I was like, you know, I'm going to stay away from traditional, the traditional medicine, let's have a look at some holistic stuff. And I, you know, I listened to a lot of people and, you know, everything come back to an alkaline diet. Now, if me and you tried to operate solely on alkaline diet right now, it'd be probably quite hard to be solely alkaline just, just because it'd be hard to do for a start based on everything around us. But, you know, it, you don't feel great for a lot, a lot of the time. But, you know, in that case, it was quite desperate. So we looked at an alkaline diet and then we looked at uh, some holistic stuff like some cannabis oil. Mm -hmm. And his tumor markers went from over 300 to under 11 and someone basically his markers was lower than someone that could, didn't have cancer and he was stage four um wow. so we couldn't we didn't work out what it was because he didn't actually stop chemotherapy either, so i can't rule okay, that so out fine, yeah, because yeah. It, was, it was a bit of chemotherapy cannabis oil and um just an alkaline diet but what i will say is when he was just on chemotherapy his tumor markers never went under 200 but when we introduced this which we don't know what worked but it had an impact. And if you talk about stage four cancer, you talk about diabetes, where most people get diabetes and they're like, that's sort of, this is I'm me now here, forever. Um, but you can work towards it. And I think that it's just, a lot of it's just down to lifestyle choices. Yeah. And they're not easy because it Especially, is hard yeah, yeah, yeah. to pick, am I going to do this or am I going to have this? It's a choice and it's hard because we bullshit ourselves as humans. Yeah. And back to self-awareness, how easy is it, right? When you're like, I'm going to the gym today, but you don't feel like it. And then how easy is it to say, well, I've been four times this week, I've eaten good every day, I, I can miss it, it's not gonna do anything. You know what, for me it's really difficult. Oh, okay, that's good. For most people, but like yeah. I understand for most it's easy, but I look at that and say, you dickhead, bro, get up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I say, that's not enough. There's seven days in a week. 
I need two rest days or one rest day. So, but this is taking years to build into me. It's taking years of getting up and being like, oh, going to the gym, you know, being like, so, but most people absolutely are gonna say, oh, I've done 90% good, which, which by the way, that's- Still good. It's, yeah, it's but, better than 0% yeah. good, right? Um, like no one has to necessarily be elite if they don't want to, but I, you know that self-respect thing? I feel like we have a respect to ourselves as a human. Mm. Like humans can be different shapes, different sizes, but we all can agree what an elite physical body looks like. It's a certain percentage of muscle mass, certain percentage of body fat, your organs have certain um, subcutaneous fat, visceral fat around them. Mm. There are measures of what is an elite body. We know that, the athletes, right? Mm. I feel like as a human with one short life, I want to be, not an athlete, but as close as, as is sustainable to that. Because yeah. in my head, when I think of a human, that's who I see. I see David Goggins. I see yeah. his body at 50, whatever he is. Yeah. I see, I don't see, I see him. Do you know what I mean? And like, for me, I think just as humans, this might be quite evolutionarily, but why aren't, why shouldn't we be the fittest we can be? Hmm. You know, there's, uh, it's hard. Hmm. Pizza tastes a lot better than fucking broccoli. It does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Put, the bro put the broccoli on the pizza then. Um, and, and one's a lot cheaper, you know? Like one is genuinely a lot cheaper, but you know, alongside all of this, we have society, social media, blah, 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 money. You know, with cancer therapy, cancer is a what? Billion, billion, billion dollar industry? And it will always be. There is no money in a cure. No. There's no money in a cure, whether they have it or they don't have it or they can have it. And there's no money in saying, eat healthy, don't take our drugs. These cost a thousand pounds a day, but just have some fruit. There's no money in it. Well, if you go into, like, let's say you stop for fuel, you're in the petrol station and you, you, you I don't know, you drive in for three hours and you're like, I need, I'm hungry. That look at the actual options yeah. in in that, and and the reason why is because one, you know, healthy food doesn't last as long. Yep. And the food that they class as healthy, if you actually look at it, most of almost every single food that they class as healthy has seed oils in there, and seed oils are a proven they're not good for you. There, there there is no good in in seed oil series. Not good for one, it can make you fat, and two, it's not good for your digestive system anyway as a whole. So when you actually look at it, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go and pick the healthy option, but the healthy option isn't actually healthy. And, 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 and for some reason, it does frustrate me because why should companies be allowed to market something that yeah. isn't healthy as healthy? Yeah. And, and the general person, like, like, you know, yeah, of course, like me, me and you may look at it and be like, right, let me look at the back, let me yeah, take yeah, a look. Yeah. But my mum's not going to go in. And if it says fat free, my mum's like, oh, cool, that's better. That's, it's just like. My mum avoids it. She's like, if it's yeah, fat free, it's lacking fat soluble vitamins. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But it's, there's good fats and there's bad fats, of right? Course. But my point is, my mum will think that's the healthy option because it's, it says they're on it, right? And, and that's what frustrates me a little bit. It's like, you know, you, we, we, you're being misled. If you don't do your own research, you are being misled. And that's why I think that like, I love Andrew Huberman's oh, podcast. Yeah, I listen to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, he, he talks a lot about different health benefits of stuff that you can do, which are free. So, you know, for instance, like saunas are maybe a bit different. It's not free, but, um, you know, I think they did a study of 57 minutes a week in a sauna reduces the chance of heart disease, I think by like yeah, 40 yeah, something yeah. percent. And then cold water exposure, massive 11 massive. minutes a week in cold water has no end of health benefits, stimulates brown fats, mm. reduces chance of disease. Now, cold water, right? Unless you're really unfortunate in the UK, pretty much everyone's got access to cold water, right? But the thing is, most people don't want to do it because it does not feel very comfortable at all. It does actually get quite addictive, right? But Especially in the summer, it's really nice in the summer. Yeah, but like, actually, it, is a, it does go, once you've done it a few times, it does get addictive, but I yeah. know it doesn't feel good to start. Like, uh, so then you all start saying to yourself, like you said, say to yourself in the morning about going to the gym, you're like, come on, get up, let's do it, right? Yeah. Like, you got to look at it and be like, it's just water. It's all it is, and yeah. you can get out whenever you want, right? But I think that people aren't willing to do it, and I think that it's up to you to do it, and it is a choice and you have to make the choice, and it's very easy to talk yourself out of a choice. It is, and, and speaking of good people, Tim Spector is over there as well. Really good books, The Diet Myth, and I'll, you should read oh, Spoonfed. Is, do you, oh, spoon, so I've heard about Spoonfed, I haven't read it though. Is that a good book? You should read it. So I think a lot of it you'll probably be like, yeah, I kind of know, mm. but I think it's really good for you, especially with kids, mm. to read and just have study. He basically offers, you know, it's not like a radical perspective, but you know, about gluten, about, um, diabetes about he just kind of goes through it and says look 
the food, like you say, says low fat, low salt. What does that actually mean? It mm. means low salt compared to McDonald's, which mm. everything is low salt compared to McDonald's. So he goes through kind of like lots of myths in Spoon Fed. Mm. That one, uh, the diet myth is a little bit older, but they've got the Zoe podcast, which mm. is really good, um, where they talk through sh like really, really good, all scientists, all like verified. But he just talks through lots of myths and how like, you know, gluten-free, for example, is a multi-million pound industry when there's this much of the population who are actually found to be intolerant to the point that it makes them vomit and you know, do things like that. And most of the rest of the population when tested were kind of fine with it. And a lot of the time, if you say to yourself, oh, bread makes me feel a bit iffy, it's gonna, because your body's gonna say, you're saying that for a yeah. reason, evolutionarily. I agree. So, and you know what you said about like the, the packs and research, it's so hard because you go on the back of a pack and it says palm oil, cocoa, buto, I study biochemistry, I get most of the ingredients. And yeah. if I Google it, I can, I can be like, okay, I know what that is actually. Who, like 99% of people yeah. haven't got a degree in biochemistry, yeah. nor should they, Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. like to understand it. And then you've got research, you've got like the government saying some healthy diet, which is so outdated now. You've got Tim Spector saying one thing. You've got Hooverman and his gang saying one thing. Mm. You've got the, that fucking steroid guy, um, Liver King saying one oh, thing. Yeah, yeah. You've got Steven, CEO who, I love his podcast, but he really doesn't know science very well. Having on these American witch doctors it is really fucking it hard. Is, it is. Like to live, you've got people saying, oh, don't do calorie deficit, it doesn't work. But then you've got physics saying it's thermodynamics, of course it works. So it is very, very difficult for people out there. But I think there's obvious choices, fruit, veg, whole grains, nuts, seed. You know, there's, there's certain things that are like logical, Maybe they're not logical. Maybe because we have backgrounds or we understand it, we say that. I don't know. Do you, do you think that? So for me, I've tried so many different diets. Right. So when I boxed, I had to, you know, carbs were really low, but it was high oh, intensity, man, and you know, yeah. And I was like always pretty much tired, and it, it's not good for you, right? You know, cutting weight is is, is terrible it's for you. Work, but yeah. and then when I was when I was like younger, I did a bit of bodybuilding, so I'd be eating like five meals a day, trying to put weight on, and then football site different so it's all different right so i've tried so many different diets right and like a lot of it i never felt good when i when i picked a diet and yeah, I, yeah, and people yeah, are telling yeah. me to do these different things and what's crazy is i feel that what well, actually a good friend of mine cody davis who's also a boxer and i just think how do you stay in shape like all year round right he does train hard obviously and it's good but he's like i just eat i can tell how I feel with my body. Mm. So he says, I will listen to what my body's telling me. If I feel good, then I eat something. If I don't, I don't. So then I started to just journal, right? And I would just track what I ate, what time I ate it, and how I felt. And I and I did it for like three months, right? And I've literally, I can share the spreadsheet with you. It's quite, it's notes oh. everywhere. But what I actually realized that, because I was, the whole breakfast is the most important thing a day. And I think I actually heard some guy talk about Edward Bernay, the, the propaganda expert, was actually employed to, to push meat in the breakfast because of sausage sales and all that type yeah, of stuff. But money, money, money. Yeah, it's always money, right? But what I found was, right, like breakfast became a thing through marketing. So Yeah, it did, it did. Yeah, so I don't need breakfast, right? That's what I thought. Like, what's the point? Yeah. And also, like one of Huberman's um, studies was, or someone he had on there was saying that if you ever, ever want to do a high focus task, then don't eat before it because blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so yeah, I was like, that. well, I try and get most of my work done like that in the morning. So what's the point of me having breakfast? Then I realized after like a week or two weeks, I was like, I actually feel better for not having breakfast. Now I don't even get hungry in the morning, right? And then I was like, then I, I started cutting my meals down to the point where I was having one evening meal, right? And in the, in, if, I, if I felt hungry in the day, I was having like a piece of fruit or something. And this is crazy considering the amount of different food, the amount of food I used to eat. The best I've ever felt, right, is if I don't have breakfast, I will have a coffee in the morning, I'll have water, maybe a piece of fruit at lunchtime, and then I have a steak dinner or something, meat or something in the night. Something manly. Actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a steak or usually steak, but maybe chicken, but mainly steak. And then I have a little bit of veg with it and maybe some potatoes or rice, right, with it. Now. That is literally the best I have ever felt, which is weird because I've always been told my whole life by all these different people, I've hired PTs, nutritionists when I was younger, and it's always, yeah, eat this meal now, this, you go eat this time, eat it this time. And I've never felt better than that, than that diet there. And in that diet, I'm training too. So usually when I train, I feel hungry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people go, get your protein in straight after and all this. And I just found that, do you know what? When I do that, I don't lose like muscle weight Right, maybe a little bit, but not. I don't lose muscle weight, 
I actually lean up quicker. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> and um, but I don't feel like I lack energy. And if I do lack energy, I listen to my body. And I go have a piece of fruit or, or something. So. But you're on like 800 calories a day, if that. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah. But I felt better at that, which is not even. My, You're about to have 2,000 calories and get these burgers, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait for that. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but again, though, so with me, where I used to be like really, really strict, you know, when, I, when I'm on that diet, if we go out to somewhere and I want to have a burger. You will, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, nothing, it doesn't affect, you know, so. I couldn't sit like, I couldn't survive on that. I couldn't. Have because you, would you, what if you tried? I have tried. Oh, you have, okay. So if, if I don't eat, within like a certain period of the morning, because I have IBS, mm. which is in itself could be psychological, could be physical, yeah. we don't know. I get like gas and my stomach almost eats itself. Like I can mm. feel the acid just, mm. so I almost need food in there. I need lots of fiber for my gut, for my mm. digestion because of IBS. I know it helps me. Mm. So I have to have X many meals to maximize my fiber. And because I'm trying to bulk right now, yeah. I do need, need to eat, yeah. and I've noticed a difference when I have a certain level of protein, certain level of calories, I don't track it on my fitness pal anymore, but I, I've done it so much, like I roughly mm. track it. I know, I can see the gains. When I'm going to Zara and I'm buying large trousers now, I'm like, yeah. I the booty yeah, gains yeah, yeah. on there. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. it's like, when you see that working, you don't fix it because it's working. So, yeah, yeah. and if that works for you, crazy, like yeah, having I, that many calories, I would be, I just, I couldn't. I, well, I wouldn't I get think it. as like you do. I, I, I wouldn't be able to be as focused as you are on that. Mm. I would be like, oh, pizza, pasta. I'd just sure, do, do you feel though that we like, because I used to, I still do if I go out for meals, but like m most of us eat out of boredom and eat for entertainment. We don't eat because we need to. So I found that that's what I was doing. I was like, if I'm in the morning, let's say I'm in the house, I go make a coffee, I'm like, unopen the fridge or unopen the cupboards and see what's there because it's like and then you know when you go there and there's nothing there you go back and you, still nothing <laughs> there, there. In the <laughs> but you know it's like so and I found obviously if I don't put certain things in the house I'm not gonna eat it because it's not there right yeah, so yeah. like I just that's I went through a bit of a stage of that and I'm like I actually don't feel too bad like this and I actually felt better but it did take a bit of time a couple of weeks for me to get used to it because you should listen to your body like you said if you feel like that in the morning like again, you, you get to choose, you should choose what you eat, but you do. But sorry, I, I remember something you said earlier about salts. So another thing is like a bit of a campaign there was on uh, too much salt's bad for you and all this. He speaks about it in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends what salt you have. Like if you have Himalayan salt, um, you don't, it depends yeah, what salt. Because another thing is with water, right? Um, People say you should have, oh, this is how many glasses of water a day you should have, or you should do this, or when you're training, drink three liters. And I used to do all this, right? And then I actually, um, it was another guy, what's his name? I'll come back to me, right? But there's another guy I listened to and he was, he was very well educated on this. He's, I think, I don't know if he's a scientist, or I don't know where he was, but I'll remember his name. He said about water and he's like, with water, if you actually sprinkle like half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt in a, in a, in a litre bottle of water, your body will retain the water and use more water that way based on the salt and you may be able to correct me on this, or this is what he said, and um, your body won't need as much water. So I get what he's saying about the osmolarity, which is the concentration of salt in water. So obviously our, all liquid in our body, blood, everything has a certain osmolarity. Mm. It's not just um, water. That's why, you know, when people have like drips, it's never pure water, it's saline. So mm. it has salt in it. If it doesn't, you cause issues with water moving in and out of cells. And there's lots of issues with that. So I, I appreciate that if you're putting in the same osmolarity as what's in your blood, your body's kind of like, oh, that's the same as me. Let me take, so it might be right. Mm. I don't know the exact kind of um, thing sure. behind it, but also our bodies have been designed for thousands of years to not drink salty water mm. because we drink, True. cavemen were from a stream drinking water mm. and it has salts in it, but usually not sodium chloride. So mm. maybe, mm. I don't know, I, I think, we're used to drinking fresh water, right? Mm. So I, I can't, maybe, maybe the body uses it more efficiently because it doesn't have to make it, um, it doesn't have to put salt in it, it's already in there. So I can see the logic. Mm. I don't know yeah. for 100%. But again, though, I suppose like, the, I think we're, the world we live in now, one, we can't just trust a Harvard study and we can't just trust some random guy nope. that makes assumptions on social media. Like, do we, you have to be able to challenge those opinions understand that some of the stuff that you're going to take on board is going to be placebo as well because you yeah, want it to be fine. a yeah, like, yeah and if it works it works right but yeah i think that now more than ever you have to pretty much challenge all the opinions and then again make a 
make a rational decision yourself to be like, I like a bit of this, I like a bit of this. That, that sounds like it makes sense. Let me, let's see how that works, you know? And because now you see also, you've got that Tonkat Alley, you've got, um, to, I can't remember what it's called, but there's all these new testosterone, natural testosterone boosters that I've heard a lot of people talk about. I think Joe Rogan talked quite a bit about on his podcast. And you know, some of them, some of them obviously work, they spike testosterone, but then some things, again, is it placebo? So I think that you have to just take things with a pinch of salt. <laughs> Literally, it makes no it taste nice. <laughs> and then, and then like, yeah, with testosterone and stuff, it's like you, people need to realize that our bodies are so incredible and they are designed to make us survive, which means, yeah, okay, they're not designed for crazy amounts of muscle because that's inefficient. It just does not help you survive. Mm. Um, fat helps you survive, right? That's why we find it hard to mm. lose weight and that's why we store fat because as humans, evolutionarily, we need fat. Muscle is not a good food source for our bodies, which is why, and actually, this changes if you're from different parts of the world, certain parts of the world, certain people will store fat differently or better or worse because of, for whatever genetic reason, but our bodies don't want to be, you know, Terry Crews. Mm. Like that is too much muscle, maybe not him because he's so tall, but mm. like that is too much muscle for a evolutionarily, you know, advanced human. Um, but the testosterone thing, it just kind of goes to like, our bodies have, okay, if you have low testosterone, that's different, that's medical. But if you just want it because you want to get hench, it's like, well, hold on a minute. Our bodies can get there. Our bodies have testosterone, androgen, whatever it is in us at a certain level regulated for a reason because too much testosterone triggers this, this and this, and that's not good for you. So I think to summarize the video, and I think a lot of what we've talked about throughout is balance. Mm. It's you, you should eat fruit and veg, but you shouldn't have 10 portions because there's a lot of fructose. You know, you should eat some carbs, but preferably whole grain. You know, if you're gonna have meat, grass-fed, organic, preferably. If you, you know, there's always a balance of, you know, you know, eat meat. Vegan diet has been proved many times not to be the best. Eat meat, but don't have seven steaks a day, unless obviously you're absolutely humongous. Hmm. Like, there's always a balance to be had, and I think that balance is so hard to find in today's world where, like you said, there's misinformation, there's misleading information. The food suppliers, the government themselves, don't even know or understand. It's really like, who do we trust? And we could say, oh, go read that book. But then how do we know he's right? Yeah. How do we know she's right? So I think for me, and you know, it's balance, isn't it? It's a balance yeah. of everything is what will lead to optimal health. Like don't deny your body what it's craving, but not what it's craving, but if you're craving chocolate cake all the time, then that's an issue. I think don't deny what your body tells you about, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I'm getting certain things. Yeah. So for me, balance. Well, one last thing to ask you, um, how many, Based on your experience and, and things that you've you've learned over time, how many days can um, the human body go without food? It's longer than people think, isn't it? Isn't it like ten days or fourteen days? Or I think it's like thirty. Yeah, thirty. I think something like thirty. And how many days do you think it's the body stick. can go without water? It's a lot less. Five. Yeah. I think it's about five. Yeah. So when you put that into perspective, if that's the way the human body's set up. Do we, I heard someone mention this say, do we have an addiction to food? Ah, but, but that's survival. You can survive 30 yeah. days, but you and me would be a bag of bones. Oh, of course, would. yeah. So therefore, I don't think we have an addiction and I don't think... Do we need to eat every couple of hours? Depending on your aims. Okay. Depending on your aims and what your body works with. I don't. I have a food every four or five hours. I intermittent fast naturally just because mm. of how my schedule is. I don't think we need it every couple of hours, but... I think the example of the 30 days shows how resilient we are to survive. Mm. But if, if we could thrive for 30 days and we'd be like this, then mm. I'd say, yeah, why are we eating? But because our body's eating ourselves, and we're gonna have liver problems, kidney problems, mm. we're gonna have heart failure, so much is gonna happen in those 30 days. That for me is the counter. That shows that we do need food. Yeah. Oh no, thrive. I definitely think yeah, we need yeah. food. I, I was trying to um, think how often do we actually need to eat? I think it's personal. If If I'm like, for me, I can eat three meals a day and be happy. I can eat six smaller ones. I just I can't be bothered, I haven't got the time. Mm. I like just eating big meals and that's it. Mm. But I appreciate a lot of people who are having crisps, chocolate every kind of few hours is not necessarily mm. what, but then there's research to say that grazing is better than big meals. If you're grazing on nuts and yep. fruit, that's fine, right? Yeah. Balance. Okay. Balance. Balance people. Mm.